Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. Um, find myself today in a park for the for the night, I guess, here in uh, outside of Toledo, Ohio. Um, what can I tell you about Toledo? I actually think it's kind of a cool town from what I've seen of it. Um, it's kind of maybe in the Rust Belt, but this is the place that they make um, Jeep Wranglers and Renegades. So there's plenty of um, plenty of work going on here. And they, they have some other industries like glass. Um, and it's also a port on the Great Lakes. And the, uh, the Maumee River, which is actually fairly scenic, um, goes through Toledo. So um, yeah, right on the banks of the Erie. Um, just south of Detroit here. So um, what I wanted to talk to or talk about today was when, when people think that they should be helping the truck driver. And, and let me just kind of start this by saying, you know, it is nice to help people but helping people when you real when they don't ask for it first of all and when you kind of don't know what you're doing is probably a bad idea and you know let me start out by saying I, and I don't know how other truckers feel about this but I know that other truckers have asked permission to do what I'm about to talk about and that is climb on my steps or my running board uh, whatever you want to call it without asking I've had that happen three times since I've been a truck driver and every single time I didn't like it um, one time there was a road that was blocked off and I stopped I rolled down the passenger window to ask a construction worker and he climbed up on the window, or, you know, climbed up instead of just talking to me, although he could see me. Um, and I have a, pre, you know, I have a voice that projects, so it's not that hard. The second time was when I turned down a road and it, you know, it turned out that I couldn't get to where I needed to go because it was, it was truck prohibited. So, you know, it's not that hard to figure out what to do, right? You just go back where you came and get a different route. But this guy, so this guy pulls up beside me and I was just going to like turn left, back straight, and then turn left again. That's how I was going to do my turnaround. This guy stops his car. This is just a two-way road. Stops his car next to my door comes out of the car and climbs up on my driver's door to tell me what I already knew and how to get to where I was going, which I had already kind of figured out too. Um, and then the third person that did it was just yesterday um, at a shipper. This guy came out to bring me my paperwork and he just decides he has to climb up and be about a foot away from my face. Um, during, you know, coronavirus, and, um, you know, and then, and we'll get into the uh, help when you don't want it. He was one of those, too. So, anyway, I don't know if other people feel that way, but I really don't. I feel like you're invading my personal space if you climb up on my um, running board, up on my steps, without asking. Um, and sometimes people have thought about doing it and Beatrice has greeted them in a way that they were um, deterred from going further up. But I was, you know, especially yesterday, I was already talking to the guy. So usually when I'm already talking to somebody, she doesn't do it. Oh, I, I take it back. I had four times. A state trooper, I, I had pulled over the side of the road to look real quick where I was going and a state trooper like came up immediately and he started to go up on the door and she uh, 
she got in his face. And so he was like, anyway. Um, so help when you don't want it and don't ask for it. So I had three of these incidents this week. The first one was I was actually outside my truck at a shipper. I had already backed into the dock and I had chalked my trailer wheels like they asked. But they didn't let you come in the building or anything and they just talked to you on the phone briefly. So I was outside with Beatrice just because there was a grassy area. I was just letting her sniff around and, you know, take a leak. But I'm within, you know, 30 feet of my truck, right? And so these, there were people coming and going, and I wasn't paying too much attention, but then this guy comes out and he walks down between my truck and another truck that was beside me. Um, then I heard um, air rushing. Why? Because he popped my emergency glad hand off the trailer. But he didn't ask me to do that. And I don't like people touching my truck. Um, for any reason without asking me or without me, you know, kind of indicating permission. You know, like Francis um, said in Stripes, you touch my stuff, I'll kill you. Um, and, and, that, and that even goes for people that work for my company. Like one time I was pulled into a shipper and I stopped and I knew I had to slide my tandems back, but I usually wait till I get inside the gate and I'm kind of lined up for my, my dock. Then I'll slide my tandems once I don't have to maneuver as much. So this other guy, this was when I was at night, this other guy pulls in, but he can't, um, he can't pull in beside me because when he swung, his trailer corner was sticking out too far. So he, dis so he honks at me right and I'm also not a good I'm not a fan of being honked at you want to tell me something walk up and tell me don't honk at me and expect me to guess what it is that you're thinking so he doesn't he but does he get out of his truck and walk up and go hey man can you move up or whatever because I was parked just like the other trucks basically no he gets out of his truck goes up to my tandems and at night we didn't have the air slide uh, trailers. We didn't have air ride trailers either uh, and not, not at, in the dry division. Um, and so he pulls the handle to release the pins on my tandems. And I, you know, I'm looking back there and I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Why are you messing with my truck? And so I got out and I'm like, dude, don't touch my truck. Oh, I was just trying to do you a favor. I said, don't touch my truck. Don't touch my truck. And so then he was all butthurt about it. And he didn't do any, he didn't, then he never did ask me to move or slide my tandems or whatever. So, so that was like, that wasn't even him helping, right? Like, that was him just messing with my truck. So the guy with the airline, I go around the truck and I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Well, we're supposed to take, the, I, I said, I don't care. It's not your truck. I said, first of all, you know, you shouldn't touch somebody's truck without asking them or at least explaining what you want to do. Second of all, that airline was pressurized because I don't set my trailer brakes to park, okay? unless I need to slide my tandems, somebody asks me to set them, or I'm dropping the trailer, right? They're not parking brakes. They're, you know, they're trailer brakes. And if you even read it, it says, you know, um, what's it say here? It says, not for parking on the red handle, not for parking. So like I said, I don't pull that and release the air to my trailer unless one of those three conditions exists. So I said, you know what, dude, you just pop this line off. And by the way, the engine was off, luckily. So eventually it bled down and, and it did pop the valve. But, you know, I was like, don't touch my truck. That's not, you know, that's not cool. 
I don't touch, I don't mess with your equipment. Like, like I've never gone to a shipper and just jumped on one of their forklifts or decided to, you know, do something unless I ask. Like there is one shipper that we use who we always clean our trailers out once we back into their dock. And they kind of have given permission to like open the door, their door, so we could get in the trailer to sweep it out and, you know, move the light around so we could see. Um, but that's the only time I touch anything, but basically they're like, yeah, go ahead and, you know, cause they're working and they're like, yeah, just get the trailer swept out. So anyway, that was the first time where he thought he would, you know, like help himself. And so, <laughs> and the end of that story is when the guy, another guy came out to bring me the bills and called me an asshole for saying something to his friend. And I said, you know what, dude? I said, if you think, if you got a problem with that, then you probably don't have a problem with me walking inside your facility and just, you know, using your equipment without asking. Well, no, you know, I was like, I don't even want to hear it. I don't, I don't care how many trailers you've loaded. I don't want to hear it. So the second time this week that somebody decided to help me was the guy who came up on the door. So, you know, he's like, and, and he just stayed there too. I was like, okay, dude, like I got shit to do. So I just started the engine. Well, and then I start to pull up and he gets off and he, you know, but then he wants to direct me how far out I should go. And so of course, you know, I finally, you know, I'm looking, I stop so I can go close my doors. But before I even get out of the truck, he's starting to close my doors. But of course, like sometimes when I get trailers that are already sealed, he doesn't close them right. He doesn't latch the top cam on the left-hand door. So he's already bringing the right-hand door around. I'm like, Holt, just stop. I said, this, this is not closed properly. And then when he tried to close, I fixed it. When he tried to close the right door, he didn't get it right either. And, you know, so then I was just like, I got it. <laughs> you know, you can go, go back inside or whatever. Um, I, you know, he was trying to be nice. I think he was also trying to just, skate a little bit get out of work but but i'm like just talk i'll talk to you but let me do the work and the third time was just today and it was actually a twofer so i had a drop and hook at a shipper and i go i i drop my my empty and i go to where i know the loaded trailer is and at this particular shipper they always want to meet you at the loaded trailer and then they put the seal on the trailer and confirm it with the paperwork. But they always come out to do that. So when I get to where my trailer is, it's parked next to another outbound trailer. And there's a guy already underneath that outbound trailer. But the trailers are pretty close together, but not, not so close that I couldn't back under it and not so close that I couldn't crank up the landing gear. It would have been tight. I would have had to like kind of turn sideways. But so this guy in this other truck, a different trucking company, he decides that I don't have enough room. He's he, he without asking, without me asking him to do anything, he decides I don't have enough room. So what's he do? While I'm backing in, he starts backing up then pulling forward then backing up but he's he's cranking his wheel so at times i know he can't see me and he's backing up and pulling forward and, and, and so finally i just pulled way forward and off to the right i'm like you know what dude you work your magic you work your magic and he and honestly he went back and forth like about eight times and then his truck and trailer end up like, you know, a dozen feet away from me. And I'm like, dude, I would have already been under here and had this thing cranked up, except I had to wait for you to like, you know, maneuver. And, you know, when I really didn't need it. And I don't know, maybe he thought I was gonna hit him back and under. I, I don't know what he was thinking. So then, so then I get under the trailer, right? But there's people around 
And so I'm trying to pay attention to them so I don't run anybody over. And the guy that came out to seal the trailer, he's like, oh, you're, the trailer's too high. Go ahead and pull out, let me crank it down. So I'm like, okay, fine. I pull out, right? But then I, I hit the brakes, I get out. And he's, he can't, hand, you know, he's trying to hold on to his paperwork and manipulate the landing gear crank. Well, he finally gets it to seat in the low gear and he starts cranking and it's taking forever and ever. And he's like, okay, that's good. And I look under there and I'm like, you know, if we're gonna crank this thing, let's just make it count. So I, I'm like, all right, I, I walk over to it, I put it in high gear and then I really do crank it down. So it's, it's pretty dang low on my skid plate. And you know, then I back under it, but it's like, just let me do my job, right? Because I'm pretty efficient at it, and I really don't want people touching my truck. Because if this guy gets a hernia cranking down my trailer when it's my job, you know, I don't want my company hearing about it. I certainly don't want his, you know, workman's comp carrier going, well, you know, why was he doing your job? Well, the reason he was doing my job is because he thought he could. You know, but I don't know if you guys have experiences like that. But um, with the exception of backing in a, tr a parking spot in the dark, in the rain, at a truck stop, you know, don't help people unless they at least indicate they want the help. You know, but don't just take it upon yourself to quote help somebody if you don't know what you're doing. Now. I know other truck drivers know what they're doing like the guy at night thought he did. But even then, if you don't, you know, just wait. Don't try to help some, because the other thing that the help kind of means to some people, including me sometimes, is that you think I'm not doing something fast enough or that I'm not doing something right. And you know, I, I'm not super thin skinned, but you know, just respect people and let them do their job. Because sometimes they're just learning how to do something that you haven't done before. Like when I when I pulled into this shipper this morning, I stopped because somebody was calling me, but I didn't have my earbuds, so I stopped in, you know, what I was doing, completely stopped the truck so I could take the call. Well, this jockey sees me and thinks, I don't know where to go, even though I've picked up at this place like at least a half a dozen times, right? Um, and so he starts waving me on f like crazy. And then, then he's like, you know, follow me. I'm like, dude, I know where I'm going. I just wanted to take a phone call without driving at the same time. So anyway, maybe I'm just a curmudgeon. Maybe I'm just, a, you know, one of those guys. But I like, I know when to ask for help. And until then, you know, don't touch my truck. You know, I don't need your help. I'll let you know. Um, so anyway, I hope everybody has a good day. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Um, I think the weather is going to be okay. Oh, public service announcement real quick. 80, I-80 through Illinois, especially east of like, um, east of I-55 basically, you are going to hit heavy construction. You're going to hit heavy construction again when you get into Indiana on the area I call the Indiana 500 where 94 and 80 run together. Then you're going to get a several healthy doses of one lane construction on the Indiana toll road and right past the, the toll plazas when you get into Ohio. So all, there's going to be several from like west of Toledo all the way across the Indiana toll road, um, west of Toledo on 8090 and all the way across the Indiana toll road are going to be a lot of single lane places. So if you can avoid that, especially this weekend on I-80 through like Joliet, Illinois, if you can avoid that, I would. Um, you know, maybe find an alternate route, 
go through at night, um, I don't know, but it's it's going to be you're going to need to a lot, you know, a, a lot of extra time. It's going to be you're going to be coming to a complete stop several times. So anyway, uh, be safe. It's construction season. Be patient. So talk to you next time.